My name is Kamara Ellison and I'm Director of Talent and Faculty Affairs for the Medical College of Wisconsin. I've been fortunate to be a part of the Medical College of Wisconsin community for just a little over 16 years now. Uh, started there actually as a recruiter and so I've been fortunate enough to be part of, kind of talent acquisition my whole time there. Uh, I now do talent acquisition for both our staff and our faculty who are our medical doctors and research scientists that are a part of really the integral piece of, of who we are. I also now uh, am part of the talent development, organizational development side of things, and work with our diversity uh, initiatives as well. So I really get to see sort of the whole gamut of talent and performance and development. I like to say from sort of like the moment that they are thinking about joining the Medical College of Wisconsin to the point that they've made the decision to be with us and how I can encourage and develop them throughout that time. The Medical College of Wisconsin is a freestanding medical institution, which means it's one of the unique medical schools in that it's not part of a larger university system. So uh, we have been around uh, since the late 1800s and uh, are really a, a, a staple in our community. We're one of the largest employers. We have two major hospitals that we're affiliated with, an adult level one trauma hospital, as well as a children's hospital where most of our doctors and scientists practice. One of the biggest challenges that we have in terms of managing talent at the Medical College of Wisconsin is this incredible variation of who walks through our hallways. We have individuals that have uh, more degrees and initials behind their name than I could ever imagine to those of us like myself that I like to say are just, you know, everyday talent that walk through the door that are excited to contribute to the mission of the Medical College of Wisconsin. And I think historically medical schools have struggled with a bit of a higher hierarchical uh, system. You know, there's faculty and then there's staff. It's one of the things as a diversity practitioner that I really am, am trying to, to work through in terms of um, getting rid of that. But that's interesting from a performance management perspective because I think that our faculty have approached uh, performance and development very differently than staff. Most of them have uh, enjoyed the majority of their career in more of an academic setting. Uh, some might even say sort of the ivory tower experience. And this idea of uh, being reviewed or getting feedback in the format that many staff are used to has been very foreign to them. So kind of an interesting idea to introduce a different type of accountability into our culture. Yeah, leadership development has been a huge focus for us over the last couple of years and I think is just going to continue to be the area that we really look at investing. So, you know, doctors and scientists are incredibly educated. They spend a good portion of their lives being educated, but the one piece that is missing is really sort of this business side of things. And so what we find is we have incredibly talented leaders that rise to the top in their field of expertise that might even be ready to take on an institutional leadership role or a leadership role within their specialty, and they've never been trained on things like performance reviews coaching, mentoring, giving effective uh, feedback, uh, project planning, strategic planning. These are things that seem very foreign to them. In fact, some will say, well, that's business and we're not business. And so what we've been really trying to focus on is how do we make that less scary, less foreign, and how do we really work on getting them educated on the basics of really what it takes to be an effective leader and break down these walls of academic medicine versus sort of the for-profit business world. So we've uh, partnered uh, with a university in town to help us do that and certainly have begun to utilize some of the, the people fluent tools to help us start to drive that in our organization. And it was why when we were out looking for a provider, this whole idea of succession planning and performance uh, and development was so important to us. It's really a huge culture change for us. You know, I think when other fields talk about talent management, they often talk about sort of the ROI and the bottom line and driving to the customer. And we certainly have customers. We, we have 
patients. Though most, you know, most medical uh, professionals are very offended by the sense of their patient being a customer because it makes it sound like a commodity uh, versus a person. And they really view their patients as uh, human beings that they're able to touch their lives, change their lives. Um, you know, we say we're, we're looking for the cures to all of the world's ails and that's a part of what we get to be a part of every day, not just making a better widget or a better product. And so um, I think that's one of the, the major differences is, is kind of how we approach why this is important. Uh, because it's not uh, the, the whole uh, mantra around bottom line and ROI and more money uh, is something that's almost offensive within our culture, though we do understand we need money to exist. Uh, and so it's really helping them understand what does it look like for them? What does it mean to become a better uh, research scientist? What does it mean to become a, a better medical doctor? What does it mean to become a better colleague? Uh, and how do we work better? How, how does effective team building impact their practice and their expertise? So we did our first ever engagement survey of both staff and faculty. And we heard from them that they loved being a part of the Medical College of Wisconsin. Our pride score, our engagement scores were incredibly high, but they didn't know or understand always how their day-to-day -day contribution aligned with curing cancer. Uh, so we wanted to do something to help people understand a little bit more about how when they walked through the doors of the Medical College of Wisconsin, they were contributing to this amazing uh, making our world a better place mission that we were, we were all about. Secondly, uh, we definitely had an accrediting body that came in and said, uh, talked to some of our faculty members and they said, you know, I don't consistently get feedback. And so they, they said, you know, you need to find a, a more consistent way of doing this and we want to have it centrally managed. And then this accrediting body said, no, I don't think that your faculty, particularly your junior faculty, and again, this goes to sort of those different generations entering the workforce, they were looking for a lot more feedback than perhaps our more seasoned faculty had been. And so, uh, so we really realized that we, we needed to move forward and do this from an accrediting um, perspective um, as well. And so our president wanted to have something in place to show our staff and faculty we were going to invest in them. We wanted them to develop in their careers. The engagement surveys showed us that our people wanted to be getting feedback and understand where they fit in this great organization. And then the accrediting body said, we really need you to do this as well. So it was, it was everyone sort of saying, you need to be giving feedback. And that really sent us out to the market to say, we need to find a system to be able to help us do this well. And the scariest part of that for me was to do that in a place where this had never been part of our culture. So it wasn't just going to be about introducing a system, but it was going to be, a, you know, a complete change management and culture change process as well. So we really needed to find an organization and a system that would work well with us to do that. One of the very first things that we considered was ease of use. So we have uh, in, in that, that large grouping of different types of professionals, you know, along with that are all sorts of different uh, generational elements and um, familiarity and comfort with technology. So I knew that I needed something that was going to be fairly easy. Um, I like to say, you know, sort of that amazon.com kind of experience. You just go out, you do it, it's intuitive. I don't need all of this training to figure out how to use it. And I needed a system that was going to be flexible enough to work with us. I also knew that not everyone wanted to be treated the same. And so I wasn't going to be able to roll out one performance management system and say, this is how everyone will do it, step one, step two, step three, follow it or else. I needed to be able to have a system that was going to flex with us to say, this department would like to do it this way and this department would like to do it that way. For example, uh, the whole idea of kind of the 360 self-review. Not every department was ready to, to roll out a self-review peer review, matrix manager reviews, and some thought that was the greatest thing in the world. So I needed to be able to have a system that would allow us to flex and, and if you will, be inconsistent uh, within our process. 
so uh, we had done a, a fairly extensive RFP process, which is another recommendation I would have. We got a lot of faculty and staff involved in actually meeting with the vendors, so they really felt part of the process from beginning to end. Uh, and we didn't choose people fluent at first. In fact, that first goal setting period that we went through was actually uh, with a different vendor. And to be honest with you, um, it went okay, but I had big red warning signs almost from the beginning. So we went back out to the market um, and spoke with people fluent, who was one of our top vendors from before. We spoke with a couple of other um, top folks as well. And people fluent um, easily and almost immediately rose to the top uh, in terms of being the partner that we needed to switch to. A couple of different uh, things that, that were really powerful there for me. One was that people fluent almost immediately said, sure, we'll give you a sandbox environment to play around. And we know you haven't signed with us yet. We know you haven't chosen us yet, but we understand where you're at. Um, I was going to be, you know, proposing one, a money loss from the first vendor and then investing in a new vendor. I, I couldn't afford to not do this right. It was my job and the job of many of my colleagues uh, on the line and people flew in immediately. I felt like from the moment um, I spoke to my account executive was there to partner and, and help and see me through. The other thing was I needed to get this up and running in 14 weeks. So I needed to transition from an old one and go to a new tech solution. And People Fluent, um, I feel like it did everything the other one didn't do. Um, from the flexibility around the wording, I could change words just about anywhere in the system I wanted to to make it comfortable um, for my people. Uh, to goal alignment, I could align goals up, down, across, diagonal. We have people that have the weirdest reporting relationships in our organization and I needed them to feel aligned to goals that were all over the place. And every time I spoke with People Fluent, it was a yeah, sure, we can do that. Give me a little bit of time. Let me figure out how we could do this. Um, the training that they provided to my team immediately was so powerful. My team was trained before we started our implementation so that then when we went into the implementation phase, my team could speak the same language as the people fluent folks that were supporting us. And it was, um, and I say this honestly, it was, it, it was a beautiful partnership. There were days when my team would suggest something and the people fluent folks would go, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Let's take it that way. And then, you know, vice versa. And I just felt like we were together, even on those days when it got a little tense and we were all thinking, how are we going to get this done in time? Um, it was a true partnership. No one thought we could get it done in 14 weeks, probably the people fluent folks included. Um, and we were done in 12 with two weeks to spare. Uh, and again, that's really because of the powerful partnership. The other thing that I really appreciated then and now about the people fluent product is that I needed very little involvement from my, my IS team. So um, I had uh, you know, mostly, you know, folks like me <laughs> who aren't techies that were really able to work through the system. And to this day, when we need to make little adjustments here and there, my team, for the most part, um, can do all of that. So I feel very empowered by the system. We feel very empowered by the system. Uh, and, you know, one of the things I was nervous about was that handoff, that moment when the implementation partner and team that you've been working so closely with goes away and they sort of hand you off to kind of like the client executive that's going to be there. You know, what is that going to be like? Are we going to lose this? And it's been, again, just an ongoing, you know, partnership, someone that's been available uh, to, to address our needs. And as we continue to look and grow and expand, uh, it, you know, it continues to, to fit our needs. So it's been an incredibly positive experience. And the interesting thing is what I heard when I rolled this next phase out was, was my customers, my, my community at MCW said, oh, you listen to us and everything we didn't like about the first goal setting um, process that we went through, you changed in this one. Uh, and you know they didn't necessarily know that we went through a whole new system, uh, but it was really powerful to be able to leverage that as well. And I've got a few people out there that don't think this is the greatest thing that ever happened. And I knew that their tendency would be to go to the dean or the president and say, why are we doing this? Help me understand. And I needed to know that they were going to be on board and really support this. Because if they had one little chink in their armor, this whole thing could, could fall apart. And then it was really a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations. So myself and my colleagues and my team, we met with the head of every department and sat down and talked with them about what were their challenges 
challenges as they thought about this? What was what would their input into the process be? We put together uh, process and change management development teams that had staff and faculty, uh, people from all different specialties and disciplines represented, so that we were getting everyone's input as we went along. Everyone understood that they did not have the final say, but that their voice was going to be heard. And so we involved them in, in the whole development of the process, all the way down to the words that we use on our rating scales, because you'd be you know, amazed at what one word uh, could do to throw the whole thing off. So they gave us input on all of those things. Uh, we used the word dimensions instead of competencies, because competency sounds too much like HR and business driven. And so all sorts of different things Things that we really listen to our end users to try to make this incredibly new culture process change thing a little bit more palatable for them. For me, probably the most powerful piece of all of this has been the flexibility that the People Fluent um, system has brought to us. So, you know, I would say that that. I drive the process, not the system. So um, oftentimes when I've done things, uh, implementations in the past or worked with processes in the past, I've felt like I've had to change my process or what I would do in my company because of system limitations. And the thing that's been really powerful for me with People Fluent is that I've said, this is how I want to do it and I need you to figure out how I can do it this way because this is the only way it's going to be successful. And so that's one of the things that I think has really um, helped. And so I think the other tip that I would have is to really find a tech partner that is willing to work with you in our process. I mean, I sometimes wonder what the people People fluent folks were thinking when I said, well, the first year we're just going to set a goal. They were probably thinking, yeah, but we can do all of this. But you know, they were so, okay, great, then we're going to set a goal. And I was able to really map out my five-year vision to say, this is where I'm going to go. This is how slow I think we need to take it in order for it to happen. And, and they completely partnered with me uh, along the way. And it's been powerful. You know, This year when we got to goal setting, I didn't, I didn't have an ounce of feedback. Everyone, oh, it's goal setting time. So in one year, we got it into our culture that this is the time of year that we now set goals. And so I'm hoping as I'm starting to hear a little bit about performance reviews and people are a little uncomfortable, there's rating scales and you know that, that next year at this time, it'll just be that much more comfortable. The benefits that we're already seeing have been really increased dialogue increased dialogue. So the, the one theme that came out of our engagement survey was we get a lot of information but we don't feel like there's a dialogue. People are now having dialogues. The other thing that I think has been really powerful has been the people fluent function of recognition notes and journaling. I'm seeing people you know recording wonderful things that they're doing and then sending these notes to their colleagues all over the organization and all of a sudden people are encouraging one another without us really even having to do that. And in the medical field where you can oftentimes be very siloed, it's very powerful when it comes to creating a sense of community.